Okay, our today's lecture is on analysis of a frame, portal frame, uh, that is 2D frame on flexibility method. Uh, we have solved the beam using this method and we are all set to solve uh, the portal frame or uh, plane frame using this method. Okay, we are given this uh, frame and this frame is actually a portal frame. And first of all, I have to find its SI. As it is an open frame, I mean, you cannot see any story or way in it. So you can simply use this formula. This is number of support reaction. Uh, that is 1. Okay, this is 2. The horizontal. And this th the third is the moment. And here I have got vertical and horizontal. So we have got 5 support reaction. And number of equations available are 3. That is sigma fx is equal to 0 sigma fy is equal to 0 and sigma mc is equal to 0 uh, you can use this formula as well I mean I usually recommend this formula because sometimes structure is closed so it may have an internal SI as well so I mean it would be better to use this formula anyways you will get the same answer ok next stage is to identify the redundant actions so I'll, I, have, I have to make this structure uh, statically determinate and that structure would be release structure. Now this structure is a release structure because I have identified two redundant actions. Number one is this AR1 and number two is AR2. As its uh, SI is 2 degree, it means it should have two, it should has uh, two redundant actions. This is AR1 and AR2. So I can solve it. Uh, I mean now it's a release structure. So I can calculate moment moment here as well as load here now it is statically determinate and the load on the structure is 2 into 30 60 gips that would be taken by this support so this is 60 gips then the moment formed here would be 900 gips why because 2 into 30 it's very simple 2 into 30 and you have to multiply it as it is acting at the mid span so 2 into 30 into 15 so you will get 900 gips Okay, one thing uh, should be noted that it is forming an anti-clockwise moment here towards the support. So I have to apply a resistive clockwise. So this is 900 kip foot. Okay, moving on to uh, next stage. Uh, actually in this numerical, I have to find this AR1 and AR2, but I have to find this. It would be easy to find these reactions as well. In this, I mean, in this original structure, I can uh, make a matrix I can construct a matrix uh, that would enable me to find this these support reactions as well. How? For example, uh, if I set this as AM1, this two reactions, like this is AM1, member action, and this would be my AM2. So by using the second mathematical model, I would be able to calculate these two reactions okay AML member action due to applied loading and that is on release structure this is release structure whenever you have identified the uh, redundant actions and you have make, made the structure uh, statically determinate then it would be referred as um, release structure okay now this is my AM1 AML1 AML1 member action due to applied loading and this is my AML2 this one okay next uh, I have to apply one by one the redundant actions and we have to construct a moment table so uh, this is release structure and it is determinate now I have to apply this vertical reaction AR1 is equal to 1 fine uh, secondly I have to identify the sections as well for example, this is AB and this is BC. So uh, my uh, I'll be using two sections, AB and BC, whose length are 10 and 30 respectively. Two, uh, 10 and 30 feet respectively. Okay, first of all, uh, consider this section. AB, and you have applied this. First of all, you have to calculate the reactions. It would be very good, easy if you uh, identify, uh, calculate the support reactions. It's very easy. I mean, it's a determinate frame and you know that this all loading would be taken by this 1k uh, this support so i can apply 1k here 
similarly if you uh, move it or reproduce it along the line of action using the principle of transmissibility now it can be moved here now rotate it towards the support so one kip this is one kip 1 into 30 gives us 30 kip foot but it is forming a clockwise moment I have to apply a resistive so I have applied this 30 kip foot counterclockwise okay now it is done now I'll be drawing FPD free body diagrams so free body diagram is always very easy to uh, draw for example one kip is applied here one kip is applied here uh, I the loading the load and this member is in the same y direction it means it will not form any moment now consider this uh, okay I have to next I have to balance this joint it is acting downwards so I have applied it upwards now I have to balance this member as well so one kip is applied here I have to balance it using uh, applying this load downwards again this one kip is uh, forming a clockwise moment 1 uh, one into 30 this is actually 30 so I have to if you have to if you you are to move it towards this direction so it is forming a clockwise direction a clockwise moment so I have to resist it using anti-clockwise moment that is 30 kip foot now the uh, free body diagram has been drawn so I'll be uh, constructing its moment table it's very easy so for example this AB, uh, I have to remove all this. Uh -huh. I have to remove all. This. Okay. So this one cap is in y direction. This member is in y direction. No moment would be there. So uh, applying redundant action AR one in section AB, there would be no moment. Now coming, uh, moving towards the next section BC, uh, you have to select uh, the section X. This is a selection. Uh, section X and I have to find all moments that would be formed here okay 1 into X move this one cap towards this point 1 into X gives us clockwise X I have to apply anti-clockwise moment to resist it that would be minus X so in using applying AR1 is equal to 1 section in section BC there would be one moment minus X in section BC this minus x and in section AB there is no moment okay next this AR2 is equal to 1 kip I have to apply AR2 is equal to this is horizontal load so first you have to find this these reactions you have to because it is de determinate so you can easily find the support reaction 1 kip is uh, rightwards you have to balance it using 1 kip leftwards and again move it uh, like this using the principle of cross miscibility okay the distance you have to uh, now this load forms a moment here at this support this distance is 10 okay this is forming anti-clockwise moment but I have to resist it using clockwise so I have applied this clockwise moment 10 kip foot okay now the reactions have been found out I'll be just balancing it I, I'll, I'll be drawing the FPDs okay uh, for this section AB this is AB this one cap is applied I have to balance it using one cap this one cap forms anti-clockwise moment I have to resist it using clockwise 10 cap okay this member has been balanced now this is my first member A and this is B my origin is A I have to find out all moments forming at this point okay minus 1 into you have to move it in this direction it's forming an anti-clockwise moment but I have to resist it using clockwise 1 into x so using or applying AR2 is equal to 1 kip in section AB there would be one moment that would be x plus x this okay next I should remove everything okay next now you have to balance this joint B so I mean the this is joint B right so joint B uh, in section AB um, uh, the load uh, is acting in leftwards and the moment 
10 k foot moment 10 k foot moment is acting clockwise so i i have balanced it uh, i have applied a 1 k load rightwards and i have applied 1 k 10 k foot moment in counter clockwise direction again you have to balance the whole member whole member i have to balance this member so i have i have to apply this uh, 1 k load in leftward direction Okay, this 10 kip foot is anti-clockwise and I'll be balancing it, balancing it using 10 kip foot moment. Okay, this is clockwise. Again, uh, my, okay, this is BC and my origin is uh, from B. You have to find all moments forming at this point. One kip, this member is in x direction and this load is in x direction as well so there would be no moments however this 10 kip foot is in counterclockwise or anti-clockwise direction so i have to resist it so i'll resist it applying a clockwise moment here so this would be plus 10 so applying ar2 is equal to 1 kip foot well ar2 is equal to 1 kip the moment in section BC would be would be 10 kip foot. This this is 10 kip foot. This is a pure moment. Okay, I have uh, also uh, formulated this uh, column as well. So it's very easy to formulate. I mean, um, it is actually under the th these two are under the redundant loads. AR1 is equal to one. AR2 is equal to one. One kip. 1k uh, this capital m moment is very easy to form, formulate such as uh, i mean uh, uh, for ab it's zero and for bc it's x square so okay i have to remove all such things okay uh, ab it was zero right because there is no loading however for bc the origin is b i have to uh, find all moments that would be forming on at this point okay uh, the applied load is 2 and this is x so 2 into x again it would be acting at the center two into x yes and then x by 2 x square and you know you know it is forming an anti-clockwise moment i'll be resisting it using a clockwise so this would be plus so i have obtained x square okay next i have to find the drl matrix this is very important matrix uh, it signifies displacements in, in release structure due to applied loadings displacements in release structure due to applied loadings uh, as there are two redundant actions, so there would be two uh, entities in DRL matrix. DRL1, that would be corresponding to AR1. Uh, DRL2, it would be corresponding to AR2. It's very simple to find. Okay, in the first step, um, I have to, for, to find uh, DRL1, you have to multiply these two values, M and M1. You have to use these two columns okay uh, and you have to integrate it under this limit 10 feet okay uh, this is and yes this would also comp uh, comprise of multiplying these two values so this gives us zero but this gives us x cube minus x cube so as a whole i'll get drl1 this drl1 x square into minus x okay the uh, sp limit for second span is 30 the first span is 10 so i have found out using calculator it is this 202500 divided by ei okay for drl2 uh, i have to multiply these two columns okay zero multiplies with x gives us zero x square would be multiplying with 10 under the limit 30 and you have to integrate it this 0 multiplies with x gives us 0 but x square has to be multiplied with 10 
and you get this answer. So you have written in this form. Okay, finally, you have to find the flexibility matrix and it has uh, nothing to do with capital M. It has to do with all that small m1 and small m2. Uh, as we know, it's a square matrix and you have two written directions. So the order of flexibility matrix would be two into two. It would have uh, four entities, f11, f22, f12 uh, equal to f21. <sighs> okay, uh, to find out this matrix, Uh, you have to multiply for finding uh, f11 you have to self multiply i have to find f11 so i will multiply 0 with 0 and minus x with minus x again under the limit 10 feet and 30 feet and uh, integration would be performed so 0 would be multiplied with 0 and minus x would be multiplied with minus x like here okay 0 square it has been multiplied with itself Minus x has been multiplied with itself, square. Limit is 30 and okay then. So you'll get this value. Similarly, for the for finding f22, multiply x with x itself and multiply 10 with 10. x square and you'll get 100. And limit would be 10 and 30. Uh, DRL2. F22, right. X multiplies with x. 10 multiplies with 10 and you get this okay finally f12 into f21 that that this is actually a square matrix and uh, they are same and they are equal so finding f12 or finding f21 same one at the same thing uh, 0 multiplies with x and minus x multiplies with 10 so you'll get x and minus 10x. Zero and minus 10x. Yes, zero multiplies with x, so gives you zero. And minus 10x. Okay, fine. So you have integrated it under the limits 10 and 30 and you get this answer. Okay, next you have to use this mathematical model. This is first mathematical of flexibility matrix. And it is equal to drs is equal to drl this is d this is actually d plus f and multiplied with a r this is matrix for redundant action this is flexibility this is displacements displacements in release structure under loading this is displacements in release structure at supports it is zero because no support conditions has been given no support conditions have been provided like uh, support is settling or there is a rotation at slope or anything uh, at support anything has um, this data has not been given so it would be zero so i've solved it uh, this mathematical model so i'll get this these value okay the redundant actions ha have been found out next i can use this mathematical model to find the support reactions uh, i mean in the first slide i told you I can easily find these two reactions using the second mathematical model. Okay, I have named this AML2 and this is AML1, 960. Okay, next, this, this is AM2, this is in the original structure that is statically indeterminate and this is am1 okay this is this 60 kp is aml2 member action due to applied loading aml2 and this 900 is actually aml1 AR okay written directions you have been uh, you have calculated this matrix okay this is AR1 is equal to when you applied AR1 is equal to 1k you got this values how this and this
okay this is minus 30 why this is minus 30 because it is anti clockwise and in original structure it it or oh, here it is clockwise so it is uh, contrary to this direction so i have applied minus 30 okay next uh, 10 and 0 this was obtained when ar2 is equal to 1 was applied ar2 was applied ar2 is equal to 1 kip for power. 1 kip was applied 10 and 0 this one this 10 and and this section was 0 so I mean you can uh, solve it I mean using calculator you will be getting these support reactions so in the next lecture we'll be uh, actually we have solved uh, a beam using flexibility met method uh, we have now solved frame uh, using the same method so I'll be solving um, some indeterminate structures that would be 3d structures in the next lecture uh, that may be uh, 3d frame or 3d grid uh, you will be given one assignment as well so you are encouraged to uh, submit your assignments on time uh, because you will learn a lot uh, assignments are always very important Thank you very much and um, I hope you understand this lecture.